Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Heineken stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Heineken is a Dutch brewing company founded in 1864 in Amsterdam. The company owns 165 breweries in more than 70 countries. It also produces 250 international, regional, local, and specialty beers and ciders. With an annual beer production of 161 million barrels, it is the number one brewer in Europe. Since the merger of Anheuser-Busch and Saab Miller in 2016, Heineken is the second largest brewer in the world. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 60 billion market cap. They're trading at 51.96 a share and they have 1.2 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They generated a lot of free cash flow in 2017, 18, and 19, but it dropped to 1 billion in the trailing 12 months. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's also really strong and drops in the trailing 12 months. Revenue is the sales for the company and that peaked in 2019 at 29 billion. It dropped in the trailing 12 months to 27 billion mainly because of COVID and the closing of their breweries. This is the company's income statement and all these numbers are in euros. All the numbers on my Excel spreadsheet are converted to US dollars. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. Example, cost of the bottles and the cost of the liquids that goes into their products. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. And that was the lowest in the trailing 12 months at 8.3 billion. It peaked in 2019 at 9.4 billion. Then below that is operating expenses. Examples are marketing, insurance, and depreciation. Then below that is operating income. And that was the lowest in the trailing 12 months at 2 billion. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. That's half a billion. Then their pre-tax income. Then their taxes. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income. And that dropped a lot in the trailing 12 months to 1 billion. It was the highest in 2019 at 2.4 billion. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. When the company purchases a warehouse to manufacture more beer, the cost of that warehouse goes into CapEx. The cost of the warehouse is depreciated over time and spread out over the income statement over a number of years. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. The company does have a lot of free cash flow each year. 2.2 billion euro. It did drop to 800 million. The company pays over $1 billion in dividend payments each year. So they needed to issue some debt to run their business. They took on a lot of debt in the trailing 12 months, 7.6 billion. They did pay down 2.7 billion. So they added almost $5 billion of debt in the trailing 12 months. Let's look at the capital structure, $18 billion of equity, 26 billion of debt. They're 41% equity, 59% debt. And their net debt is 20 billion. Their WAC is 6.2%. And that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows we also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that 74 billion. And we discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $67 billion. We divide that by 1.1 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $58. They're trading at $52. So they're trading at 11% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street values the company at $50, so they're saying it's overvalued. They're saying it's a sell. This is a stock price the last five years. It looks like a roller coaster. It's been up and down. It dropped like a rock in March. The stock price came all the way back up to its pre-March highs, but then it dropped a little the past few weeks. They pay a semi-annual dividend. So in August and April, they pay a dividend. 
the dividend yield is 1.77%. To calculate dividend yield, you could just sum up the last two dividend payments, take that number, and divide by the stock price. They pay out 82% of their net income and 108% of their free cash flow. And they have a low beta 0.75, so the stock moves less than the market. The stock has gone down 2% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 17%. The 52-week low was $37, the high was 57 And the stock is trading above its 200-day moving average, but below its 50-day moving average. Only 100,000 shares are traded each day on this stock. And of the 1.15 billion shares outstanding, less than half of the shares are on float. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd be at $24,000 today. That's a 9% annual return. The Heineken family owns 50% of the company's stock. That's why it has such a low float. FEMSA is a Mexican brewing company. They own 8.6% of the stock. The next biggest shareholder is MFS Investments, BlackRock, and then Vanguard. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market's nine, the median is 14. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 46, so investors are paying $46 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share, they're at 2.2. They have a really good price to sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share, they're at 3.4. They also have a good price to book ratio. To calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in a balance sheet and they have 18 billion of equity, negative three and a half billion of tangible equity because they have a lot of intangible assets on their balance sheet. The way a company gets intangible assets on their balance sheet is when they acquire another business or merge with another business. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They can cover their interest payments almost four times. ROE is net income over equity. They're at 7%. Current ratios, current assets over current liabilities. They can cover 90% of their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets are 4.3 billion euros of cash and 2.2 billion of inventory. The company does seem to be undercapitalized. They did have 1 billion of free cash flow, but negative 2.2 billion of working capital plus a $1 billion dividend payment. They're short about $2.3 billion. If coronavirus doesn't pass this year, the company may need to take on more debt to run their business. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Budweiser, FEMSA, and Molson, all in the same industry as Heineken. And if Heineken has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're worse than everything, except market cap. They have the second highest market cap. So to summarize, I have them trading at an 11% discount. This company is definitely not going anywhere. It's been around for 148 years and they're still generating a lot of revenue. Plus they're able to still maintain paying a dividend. I ranked their free cash flow five out of 10 because it dropped a lot in the trailing 12 months. I ranked their revenue seven out of 10 it's pretty strong each year. It did drop in a trailing 12 months, but most businesses suffered in 2020. And I ranked their ratios four out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.